kind of brutal for me, for someone who, who never really like um, had any experience with alcohol in high school. And then going into that whole like icky, 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 I was like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the Kurekaru Podcast. In this episode, we interview Emily, who is a half Taiwanese and half Japanese student at Keio University, one of the top universities in Japan. And we actually went to high school together, but Emily ended up going to college in Japan. And in this episode, we discuss her childhood environment of growing up trilingually. The struggles she faced in fitting in when she did go to Japan, even though there was no language barrier. And also Emily's experience of working part-time in Japan and her thoughts of the Japanese work environment. And also in this episode, there are a lot of Japanese words and phrases, as well as some Chinese phrases here and there. So if you're not ready, make sure to watch the episode on YouTube because we have subtitles there, as well as a glossary for all the words that are not in English. And we really enjoy this podcast and hearing Emily's unique experience of being in Japan. And if you enjoy the podcast too, please consider subscribing on YouTube. We also made an account on this website called Kofi, where you can buy us a cup of coffee or a cup of boba as a donation. So if you're interested in supporting us that way, we really appreciate it. But if not, that's cool too. Hope you guys enjoy the podcast. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Korekara Podcast, the podcast where people who know stuff about Japan talk about it. So this week, we have a very special guest in Eric's high school friend, Emily. Yeah, so I went to high school with Emily in Taiwan. It was like an international school, so all the classes were in English. But um, Emily is actually a half Taiwanese and half uh, Japanese. So she's like native level in both Japanese and Chinese, and she went to international school. So she's also like native at reading and writing and speaking English. And in Taiwan, most people can speak uh, Taiwanese, which I'm sure Emily can speak Taiwanese too. So there's another <laughs> language. And she said that she studied abroad in France, so she can also speak French. So we would like to welcome Emily the polyglot. <laughs> <laughs> God, oh my God, that intro is so unnecessary. <laughs> but hello, <laughs> hello everybody. Yeah, so Emily, can you tell us like a little bit about like um, your childhood and where you were raised? Okay, okay, okay. I feel like you missed the whole point. Okay, <laughs> okay, please tell me. Um, so I think so. After after high school, that's where we part ways. Yeah. Um, I went to school in Japan and while well, everybody else um, went to school in America or Europe, I think. So I think that that's one of the biggest um, turning point where I really started to engage myself or like trying to reconnect with my roots, quote yeah. unquote. <laughs> yeah. Um, and ever since I was a child, my mom would always speak to me in Japanese and try to get me to watch like Doraemon or Ninja Hattori and all those Japanese things. Um, so yeah, that's how I learned Japanese. Would you watch those in Chinese? Because were you living in Taiwan, like since you were a child? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'd always watch, um, you know, there's like a, there's like a way that I live Thai, like a Japanese channel. W- what channel is that? It, uh, it was like, it was 75 or something. Oh, also like my, I did this thing where um, every summer vacation, um, I'd go back to my grandma's uh, hometown, my grandma's place in Hokkaido, in um, Kitamishi. And um, I would enter their school, enroll in their school for two months every year as like a, like a experience, like a exchange, study exchange kind of thing. Um, and I did that every year from grade, uh, grade one to middle school, end of middle school. So that's also how I kind of, um, learned Japanese, learned to speak and write. Was it hard to make friends with those Japanese people? Cause you were raised in like a Taiwanese environment. Um, I think it wasn't hard. Because um, it was a really small town and they, like, people don't even know where Taiwan is, kind of small town. So they just, they just viewed me as like a, this alien girl 
and <laughs> they were very curious about me. So they were really nice to me. And I don't, I didn't speak Japanese really well then. So they would always like help me and like, uh, try to like eat with me, like give me more food or like make sure that I'm, I'm happy. So that was nice. Over, overall, it's a really good experience. I'd say super cool. Yeah. So at home, did you mostly, was it mostly like a Japanese environment or did you speak like Chinese with your dad? Oh,、uh, I speak Chinese with my dad and my brother. And then I speak Japanese with my mom. Because my, my dad, he doesn't speak Japanese. So how do they, how, how does your parents, how do your parents communicate? They speak in Chinese.、Oh, my mom knows、uh, how to speak Chinese. Oh, I see. Yeah. So when everybody's around. But you never speak to your mom in Chinese? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be kind of weird. Unless I don't know how to say certain things in Japanese. Yeah. I see. So yeah, yeah, your, yeah. in your family, you kind of just got a little of everything at that point. Um, I guess. But I feel like it's pretty common with、um, bi,、um, yeah. bi national、yeah. uh-huh. family. But I think、yeah. a lot of cases that it's like the parents have to set a rule for the kids. Like maybe the parent won't respond unless the kid speaks in like a specific language. Like I've heard right, of right, some right. families doing that. And in other families where like the, maybe they immigrated from like Asia to America,、um, a lot of times like the kid, They're able to understand the language, but they always like re- respond to their parents in English. So they aren't able to speak the language. They can only like understand it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, well, my mom, she actually teaches Japanese in Taiwan. So she's really passionate about making sure that I know the language. So I feel like other family, it's very common for just like you said, like parents to force their child to speak. Like, only respond when the child speaks certain languages, but that doesn't really work when the child doesn't really know the language. Right. So, I think my mom like, focused, focused on、um, making sure that I know the language from school or like, from learning it so I can speak it naturally. And it's not, it's not like a chore or it's not like a, a challenge for me to, to try to speak Japanese to her. Yeah, it just came naturally, I guess. Yeah. I see. Which and, was cool.、Mm. And also, I know in Taiwan, they have、um, Japanese elementary schools where it's like literally like as if they imported the entire school from Japan and all the teachers are Japanese and they have Japanese sports and stuff.、Um, did you ever go to yeah, a school yeah, like yeah. that? No, never.、Oh. I, went to, I went to a Taiwanese、um, school and then, and then I went to international school. So it was in terms of my education in Taiwan, it was. Chinese to English. That's how I learned English. When did you go to international school?、Um, I, first, um, I first started I started in this really small internet bilingual school、um, from sixth grade to eighth grade, and then from ninth grade, so high school and American school. I see. So before、from、you went、school. to the bilingual school, were you, were you confident in speaking English? No, well, you no, speak no, no, no. English my English sucked. I couldn't speak English at all and I couldn't read or write. Well, I learned some grammar rules, but like from elementary school level, and my English just always sucked. Even to this day, it sucks, but at least I can speak it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, how does so, the how does a bilingual school work and how is that different than、um, international school? Well, the school that I went to was kind of like.、Uh, It, w- it was a, like a Christian school. It was like a religious school. So they kind of put more focus on the religion than studying. So there was a lot of like Bible studies. And the students were mostly like me who, who、um, didn't speak English and were Taiwanese. So naturally we just all spoke Taiwanese. And the, te- the wait, teachers wait, were, were, prob- were American. 
You guys spoke in oh, Taiwanese? I mean Chinese, oh, I mean no, no, no. <laughs> oh, that would be like super impressive. <laughs> no, that that would be that would be because like that it's like a Thai language. language. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 not Taiwanese. Like Chinese, but like very like slang Taiwanese slang Taiwanese uh, Chinese. You know, like all the 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 kid words, like the kid the kid way of speaking. Yeah, Chinese. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then so there I. Didn't actually learn. I think I guess I learned how to read and write, but my speaking was not that great. But then I met、um, some of my friends who who actually actually transferred to te- to the my high school <laughs> <Yeah> . um, <laughs> with me together from ninth grade. So and she's she's half American, so that's how I like learned how to speak English by speaking with her because she didn't she. Didn't really speak、um, Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, before I went to the,、um, the high school that I went to, I was I went to a different international school, and at that school, it's like they were they would basically accept anyone, and then so there were a lot of people. Okay, yeah. So kind of like that. Yeah, there were like people who like didn't they couldn't speak English at all, and they were like in English like in like geography class, and they're not understanding. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kind of, kind of like that. Kind of like that. Yeah. And then I stayed there for two years, three years, two years, yeah. No, three years, yeah. Three years. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then after that, I moved to the 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 proper English education, well, I mean American education high school. That was so intense for me in the beginning. Yeah. Oh really? How how so? Because my English sucked, and everybody, everyone there, is so smart. <laughs> so damn smart. Didn't you feel that?、Oh, maybe, uh, like when when I went like when I went、too. there when I like first went like first、uh, went to that school, I was like kind of surprised of like how much English I had to be speaking because most of, like it, at my other school it was, most of the time it was like it was only English like in the classroom, and then afterwards it was yeah, like, yeah, Chinese. Yeah. But yeah, 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 Chinese. Like between students, yeah, be Chinese for sure. Yeah, but it was full on. It was literally. I feel like somebody took an maybe like an American private school and then just like placed、yeah. it in Taiwan. Yeah, except it's、and、like ninety nine percent Asians. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> interesting, like interesting experience though. I I kind of like I like high school. I like my friends and every everything. Yeah, it was、nice. cool. Everyone so, was like- cool. <laughs>、mm-hmm. Yeah, so on our podcast, we're really used to like bashing the English system because we're usually talking about like the Japanese system. But how would you say in Taiwan in your、um, American international school, it like helped you? And like, what was your approach to learning English over there?、Mm. I mean, international. When you go to international school, they assume that you already speak English. Yeah, yeah. So all the, there's like、nice. there's、um, nothing in Chinese. Everything. Yeah. So yeah. But, But but you you're saying that like you you didn't know too much English like it was really tough going into the international school right so、yeah. I guess how did you kind of、um, get to that curve where you're able to understand everything properly at like oh the Mac, Mac? um well I think it's the same thing is like the whole like immersion kind of thing where when you when you're a sp- I'm sure you can relate where you if you when you go to Japan and everyone around you speaks Japanese and naturally you just start picking up things here and there and and you speak Japanese by the end of like the second year or third、yeah. year, yeah. So that's how it happened for me. And while yeah, and then also all the classes,、um, of course. And one thing that I really liked about the high school was like or the like the American style is that you can pick classes. Based on your level, like right? Interest, like in right? in every genre, yeah, and your interests. Like in every like with math, for example, if you suck at math, just take geometry, or、right. if you're really good at math, then you go take like AP calculus or something、yeah. at at freshman year. Yeah. So and there's a few. Yeah,、like、and then yeah, and then yeah, in our school, people were super smart. They especially my friend, like my, my friend group, they're all like really. Genius level smart girls <laughs> who were taking AP calculus freshman year and 
doing like AP literature and everything. And while I was like trying to like look, look, up all the SAT vocabs like on my <laughs> little dictionary computer thingy <laughs> and so that kind of I guess that influenced me pretty well in a good way where I'm like okay I gotta I gotta learn how to right. speak English and like know these words or else like can't really talk to my friends yeah <laughs> funnily we yeah. took uh we took AP calculus together that's where I met you I know in senior year I know yeah <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, I, mean, I think we 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 both sat in the the in the back, the last right? Row, yeah, in last row, and I, you were watching anime the whole time, or something like that. Yeah, I, I totally wasn't <laughs> paying attention at all because yeah, I already like, got accepted like, into school. Two people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you just got accepted into school? I think so. Really? Wait. It was senior year? No, no, no. It was like after the first semester. It was basically. Oh. So like the second semester, I was like not doing anything. Like because like we were supposed to like study for the AP test too, which I wasn't doing. Oh. <laughs> I was like, okay, oh, that's okay. useless now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. I just remember like we were just laughing all the time yeah. for some stupid shit. <laughs> yeah, and then the the professor was Japanese too, and she was like a oh, really yeah, like yeah, kind of yeah. shy, like s- small Japanese woman. And then yeah, I think I don't know why, but one time like almost nobody showed up to class, and there was like three people. I think I don't know if everyone skipped or something that. happened, but um, I probably skipped too. Yeah, I ended memory. up like I played a like I played like Death Note, like the full episode on her computer, and like projected it to the to the screen, and then we all just watched. Oh, what? We all just watched the oh, no. Death Note. Okay, well, I was not there. <laughs> Damn. It sounds like oh. this is all, like, predestined or some shit for this whole Japanese <laughs> podcast. <all these> years <laughs> later. Well, actually, though, I saw, well, I saw Jack, um, this post on Instagram, and I was, and then I found out that you guys, and I was like, oh, my God, it's Eric and Jack. And then I listened to, to, to the podcast, and I was like, oh, my God. God. Yeah, because Jack was in that class too. stop laughing. <laughs> oh, he was. Because, yeah. yeah, Jack, <laughs> Jack was in that class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just remember, like, the way you guys talk. It's, like, super funny. And then, and then I, like, after five years, I re-listened it. I relived that whole experience to that podcast. And I was like, oh, <laughs> these people have not changed a bit. <laughs> Yeah, like 50 episodes in, I'm going to know, like, your entire high school. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, wait, what do you you say was the the kikkake? What's kikkake? Like, uh, Uh, impetus? The catalyst? Yeah, to you, um, like, getting into the whole, like, Japan and everything. Oh, for for me in Japanese? Well, like, yeah, I remember in high school, I would watch anime like once in a while. Like, I, I think I watched them um, just like the super mainstream stuff. Like I watched Death Note and maybe Attack on Titan and like Sword Art Online. I think oh, it, what? what? Wait, Attack on Titan was was aired while we were in high school. <laughs> yeah, it was actually. Yeah. <gasps> what? I just watched it during quarantine. OK, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but like it's like. Everything is already subtitled, so there was like I never had the the inclination to be like, oh, I have to like study Japanese to understand what, what's going on, because it's like everything in Japanese is already available in English, basically. Mm. Even though like Attack on Titan was like airing weekly, people would sub it like instantly, like within an hour they'd be instantly, subs. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like, why would I ever yeah. study Japanese? <laughs> but um, yeah, it was just like uh, my senior year of of college and i had like some classes i had like some a room for a class so i took japanese um after like but but you said you you did you said you studied it super intensely like very passionately did i say that yeah within like (laughs) well (laughs) maybe you didn't say that but but (laughs) because you said you said like you were really focused on yeah studying i mean I, i was yeah learning japanese and then Within like a year, was it like a year or two years? And you were able to speak it. Yeah. I remember that. 
and I thought it was super impressive, but also like I can imagine how it, what it takes to be so passionate about a language. So hmm. what was your motivation to? <laughs> I'm getting interviewed here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <you know. laughs> It looks like you just want Eric to say he's like a weeb to the world. <laughs> yeah. That's basically my, the direction I mean, I'm going, yes. I always thought it'd be cool to like, I thought I thought it'd be cool to be able to like speak um, a different language. And if I had to study a different language, it would be Japanese, I think. Because like, I mean, it's, it always like sounded really like beautiful. Like whenever I would travel there and then like the... I mean, like staff, like if staff like talk to me, they would sound super polite. Like I, don't, I wouldn't know what they're saying. Mm. But it just sounds like pleasing versus like going to like some other like other places. But yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna name any other yeah. places. But... Yeah. <laughs> Maybe like in maid cafes and stuff. No, I've never been to a maid cafe. I don't. I don't know. It's just, I'm trying to trap me. You're really pushing Eric in his life. <laughs> I'm not interested in maid cafes. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay okay i thought that's where you got that exceptional <laughs> service <laughs> i study japanese from an intellectual standpoint from like i want to challenge myself and study a language not from a right not from a, like right, a right. <laughs> like an inner weave standpoint like i want to be japanese <laughs> yeah okay long okay. answer <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> whatever you say <laughs> Okay, okay. I see, I see. Yeah, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll go over, when we're re- when we're editing the episode, I'll just go over. Eric seemed like, yeah, I really wanted to go learn anime. <laughs> 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 It'll just be super random and out of place. <laughs> so, so Emily, like at the end of high school, like before you're gonna go to college, how would you say your all your language abilities were? Like, which one was like the most comfortable and which one was like the most weakest? Oh, Japanese was definitely my definitely my weakest. English was my strongest because I just finished SAT and all that exam things. And also like coming out of a fully English speaking environment. Um, so yeah, my that was like the peak of my English ab- language abilities. Um, and then in terms of Chinese, um, I was most comfortable in Chinese speaking familiarly with people but not reading or writing and academic things. So I'd say English, Chinese, and then Japanese. I see. I see. Yeah. And also like at a at international school, almost like I would say like over 90% of people go to school in in like Europe, US, or Canada. So at that point, why did you decide to apply to Japanese colleges? Um, well, going to the US was not quite an option for me at that time because I don't have an American citizenship and like nationality so I didn't feel like it was necessary because I at that point it was already really hard that I heard from um, other people that actually other like Japanese friends that it's really hard to get a like a working visa and like to continue to stay in, in the U S after graduation, college graduation. So I figured, um, there's really no point of me going to America. Yeah. And also, also the, the American universities, like the tuition fee was just crazy yeah. to me and it wasn't worth if, if I was going to go to MIT or like Stanford and did you apply, did you apply to those? Nope. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then so so I ended up only applying to Japanese schools. Oh. So I only applied to four schools and then, yeah. And I just picked from those. So what was the process like of applying to Japanese schools? Because normally you'd have to take a chicken, right? Yeah. Um, so I was in the, the kikoku shijo waku. Um, so um, what is it? Returnee. Yeah. I was considered as a returnee, so I didn't have to take the, the shiken. I just had to apply with my, kind of similar to um, the American college application wh- where I had to submit my um, essays and my recommendation forms and my SAT scores and all that. 
Um, but so I ended up going to a school that was really interesting because um, their application documents were a lot more creative and different from the other ones. So well, I don't know if I should say the name of the, the schools. Why not? It's, it's, it's a great school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a great school. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, okay. Say it's not his school. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so I, okay. Let's just say that, um, so I applied to both, um, Waseda and Keo and, um, specifically like Waseda, um, oh man, I forgot the name of the, the major, but it was like Liko. It was like, um, something to do with electronics and things like that. And then, so that, that application process was so super simple. It was just submit my scores, my, my, essays and my all the normal things and then the other one um ko i applied to um the giga pro it's called giga program um basically a program for returnees to go to ko and that was really interesting because it was ko university um in sfc in a campus called sfc it's in shonan fujisawa and it's like a considered like a new campus, like a full of like creativity and like technology and like weird people and hippies, you know, <laughs> like innovation or whatever. Just a lot of cool people there. So the application process was um, a lot more fun, where I had to record um, like a one minute video, and I can like edit it however I want it or do whatever I want, um, as long as it's as long as I'm in it. What? did I have to be in it? I don't remember, but there's something about yourself in one minute. And then there was another document where um, I was required to do whatever I want on uh, a blank A4 page paper. And then so um, I just did like, because I did, I kind of did like artsy things in high school. So I just like did my, all my weird things like, <laughs> put weird things on it and it sent it and then I got in so <laughs> like I'd say it's like an interesting yeah it was, yeah, it was perfect <laughs> for me and yeah. after I after I got in the first day of um um the the new mm. the what is that called in English um, you don't have to translate it we can we'll just put yeah, in like yeah, subtitles yeah, we can read yeah you oh yeah. okay 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 so, so the first the new gakushiki no hi um I just saw a bunch of like people with like like red hair and like people <laughs> who who were like wearing like Indian sari and like I don't know like very woke people yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> walking around like first day of Japanese anime, anime high school. school. Yeah, I feel like I can like paint it paint a picture of yeah, anime, anime yeah. high school where like there's like people you know with like um what like walking and like typing. Code, coding at the same time you know <laughs> people yeah, with like weird hair with, like, the, red, the red hair like sitting like specifically at the corner in the window like in the exactly, back like. exactly yeah it was exactly like that and 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 like always has the glasses with like the with like the the reflection <laughs> yeah you know? <laughs> the reflection's always there the smart it's one like yeah, led when they, when they, they do the this yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, Actually, the square root of 25 is yeah, 5. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just calculate that with my program. So with <laughs> press, we get all these answers. Yeah, so kind of like that. And it was really exciting um, in the beginning to enter that school for me. So when you, when you, when you saw that, yeah. you were like, I'm a, I feel just, as, just at home. Or was it like, oh, what is this? What's going on here? <laughs> um, more so of the I feel just at his home, at home, because I think I was also kind of weird that time, age, and time where I just wanted to do weird things and I just <laughs> wanted to like explore all kinds of things, you know? Um, yeah. So as I met so many people that are really cool, like. Um, for example, there is one guy <clears throat> that I met. Um, he eats bugs. 
Like that's his thing. <laughs> that um, <laughs> <laughs> um like in in, 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 in a very scientific like... scientific um standpoint where you know like eat like and crickets and like eating bugs is like the best way to to for human beings to um to get um protein the, the best way it's like kind of controversial yeah, yeah 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 but to him like that that was his whole uh, um ideal is that he's going to his like his goal in life is to try to get people more people to eat bugs as protein mm. and and then because in terms of um the the ecology and like the environment <laughs> yeah um eating bugs is also very very good <laughs> as opposed to like eating cows and other meats so so he was just he was called like the earth boy and he he got really famous afterwards in japan actually and now he has his own restaurant hmm. and, wow. wait maybe i saw yeah, a documentary and, i saw a documentary on someone who likes to eat bugs oh, i don't know really if, i don't know if it's him well if if he's from ko then it's him and <laughs> so he, he we always like he had this like group of friends and i would tag along we just always go on like adventures in the mountain like oktama or uh like different uh mujinto in japan mm -hmm. and then like well i i don't i didn't know anything about what is edible and not you know in the mountain <laughs> uh -huh. but they did so they would like he would just like go around and, like pick up grass that he knows that he can eat we can eat and we just like eat things hmm. <laughs> <laughs> i'm just like imagining just like asked. a situation <laughs> like yeah, normally yeah. <laughs> normally it's like oh like oh you need to go drink man go drink but it's like a pressure like oh you gotta go eat this bug man like oh wow why <laughs> crickets yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. oh they're so good <laughs> wow, wow you're missing no, actually, out no. yeah actually so that that group of friends was like that they were like that so that's just an exact example of the type of people that i encountered early on like in my early college days that were really cool that i thought were really cool kind of symbolizes like that school where people yeah. are just like trying new things and like mm -hmm. being innovative with yeah. their life yeah <laughs> so that was fun and and well but i did feel a little bit of um fomo uh -huh. um when i first entered because um from snapchat then it was snapchat um I could see like all of my my high school friends and all of my high school acquaintances. They were going to um, those um, part, the rush. They were rushing. Is that <laughs> oh, what it's called? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they were just partying all the time, like beer pong all the time. And and um, I live I well I lived right next to my campus, which is in the middle of nowhere. And I just like well, all I can do is like look out the window and there's stars and like there's birds chirping and i'd be happy while i'll look at snapchat everyone's like <laughs> like <laughs> super super like having their college fun and like eating eating like i don't know like food truck at 3 a.m or something that looks so fun <laughs> yeah. alone um and with like probably like depressed study mom like next to me like eating <laughs> but was not didn't seem that fun yeah, so yeah i had a little fun <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah the, the oh. bug guy should come on the podcast mm -hmm. and explain his, well, his he's, thing. yeah i think definitely but he's super kind of like um busy now i think he's like semi-famous like he, so he he became kind of like a like somebody who always goes on television, who gets invited as guests, like you know the bug boy, like the guy yeah. who eats bugs, and then like <laughs> he would just come on and like do his thing. In yeah, I I kind of lost contact with him. Audience. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, so, yeah, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> but it'd be cool if he could come on and like talk about it. Yeah, I think he speaks English as well. I'm not sure. Yeah. But, and then after that, I tried really hard to experience normal college life experience in, in KO, which means like trying to get into circles and like going to 
okay, I shouldn't say circle, like sakura. Mm-hmm. Kind of club. <laughs> <laughs> and try to like find friends and like find potential like boyfriend from that sakura, which is like the typical, you know? Yeah. I tried, but it didn't really work out. So did you find it hard to um, like interact with Japanese people at all? Like, was there any sort of cultural gap between? Oh, yeah, and- definitely. Super big cultural gap at that point. Maybe maybe that's also maybe why I was hanging out with the bug eating people because <laughs> um, they were super chill. They didn't care. <laughs> but um, after that, um, while I tried Oh, I, I joined a volleyball circle, and there I definitely experienced the biggest cultural gap in my life, where I just didn't know how to interact with anybody because uh, because I realized that it was so based on age, um, like mm-hmm. Um So if we were just one year different. Or if you're Ninense, I'm Michinense, or like you're some Ninense, I'm Ninense, then, then I have to speak to you in a whole different way and like use different mannerism. And for somebody who has never lived in Japan, that was really hard to pick up. So I had to like learn everything from that. Yeah. Do they expect and, you to act Japanese, even though you were like technically like Taiwanese? They did in the beginning because my because I enrolled in that school with my Japanese name, um, so they thought I was Japanese. So naturally, they would um, have that expectation from me. But then after that, so I actually um, insisted that people call me Emily, like Emily, because um, everybody from high I was used to everybody from high school calling me Emily. Um, while well, there are people who call me Oh No, but doesn't matter um and emily so then they would know that oh emily not the emily like well, why are you well, you have a japanese name but why are you emily and then i'd be like actually i'm taiwanese blah, blah, blah. you know so i try to like establish yeah yeah to like build this thing around right. me to protect me from my from yeah, from that really harsh expectation from Japanese college life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So one of the biggest cultural shock was whenever you meet somebody, the first thing you ask is always their age. So then you can, based on that, you can uh, decide what type of language and what type of mannerism you want to, you, you have to use with that person. And that was the biggest culture shock for me at that time yeah I, I thought it was so weird like you meet somebody normally like it was like hey how are you doing right and like right. what's your name i don't know what do you do in your free time yeah. or like what are you doing in your life right but it was like hi how old are you <laughs> <laughs> oh you're 21 so you're one year younger like they're oh, okay, calculating. I can chill with you <laughs> yeah 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 okay yeah, go yeah. activate it yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly like yeah, exactly exactly though and then just yeah okay go activate it just exactly or deactivate it. and then you're just like you're completely different <laughs> when you're not speaking getting kegel right <laughs> you're so rude <laughs> Yeah. Do you ever have like a funny occurrence when you went and told um a Japanese person you were from Taiwan and they like froze up like like oh. like a kaijin like like oh like 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 I say my name, and I'll be like, you can call me Emily. Like, then Emily, Emily, yonde? Or maybe I'll just say, oh, Emily, da yo. And then they'll be like, Emily, not Emily. I'm like, oh, oh, <laughs> Taiwan から来ました. And then like, half <laughs> and then and then they'll be like, eh, half. Right. Like, eh, すごい。え、じゃあ、何ずっと台湾にいた。ってこと<笑>いや、そうそうそうそう,そう。もう大学から日本に来ました
、like, hey, すごい日本語しゃべれるのすごい日本語上手いや、yeah. that, that's, that's the usual. And I'll be like, oh, そうそう、お母さん日本人だからね。He's like, えー、すごい。え、台湾、私台湾好き。Like, 台湾、台湾めっちゃいい。And then like, we talk about Taiwan. Like, 小籠包とか美味しいよね。Like, oh, そうそうそうそう、そう、夜市とかね。I've had the exact same conversation. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then it ends, and then you don't know what to talk about, and then that's it, and you just don't talk to that person ever again. Really? Yeah. That's it, usually it how it happened.、Like、yeah. It was, yeah. Like, that's the extent. I like, yeah, it's the limit of conversation is when you finish talking about Taiwan, and then. Yeah, that's the move on with their daily、about. life. Like, it's like, it never happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think in like English speaking countries or in America, like every time you talk to someone new, it's, it's almost like a gamble of what you'll get.、It's, there's not really a set pattern. But then in Japanese, because so many people have the same like pattern of thinking, it just naturally becomes like every time you meet someone, it's like the same pattern. And if you say something, you know how, like I literally got to a point where like I knew if I said this, they were going to react in this way. And so I knew like, okay, I'm going to、yeah, put this yeah, other exactly, response、yeah. after that. And then just like blow,、yeah. blow their minds that I can speak Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had like a logic tree going, like I mapped out all the、like、potential yeah, yeah. responses. Like, like,、uh, exactly, yeah. 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 Like, okay, going down this road, okay, this response. And then, yeah. <laughs> it's it was make interesting. It... Yeah. You got to get to the point where like an error goes through the Japanese person's head and they just like, like have like a completely new response come out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know, you cleared that stage. Like,、yeah. you KO'd that. <laughs> 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 yeah. So it was really hard to go, go get over that phase and really start to like engage with Japanese people. Because, then, like, a really, like, a, well, for me, I was, I tried really, really hard to kind of like assimilate into that. Um, life, lifestyle slash culture, college culture through that sakura. But it just,、um, I just realized that I just cannot. It's too hard. A lot of things don't make sense. I think in the Japanese culture, it doesn't make sense. For example, like the drinking culture, it doesn't make sense most of the time. And、uh, the ninko j o r i t s as well. For me, it like, never really clicked with me. You, you just, You were born five months earlier than me. I have to respect you like you, you got the cure of cancer. It just didn't work. <laughs> it didn't like click with me. So,、um, so that was something that I had to struggle with, I guess. But eventually, like I learned how to speak k e g o and it wasn't that much of a、uh, hassle or it wasn't hard. So after I learned k e g o and I could. Really get it naturally and like learn their response and like how they、um, react to certain use of words. It was a lot easier to make friends. I see. Yeah. But how, so, how was your, like you mentioned earlier, how like the drinking culture is really tough. So, what was your experience of, of like the drink culture at the Sakuru that you joined in, like Nomikaze? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, that's really interesting.、Um, so, it all, all, tie, all ties. Back to like the n e n k o j u r i t s u where in a sakura there's four grades, right? There's freshman and then like second year, third year, fourth year. And every, every member, like every year has their yakuari、um, in the sakura. So freshman, you just come in and get drunk. You just basically you come in and then expect your senpai to feed you alcohol and that's it. And then the second year is like the, the kambu year where they have, to, they have to organize every drinking event. They have to organize, making sure that everybody gets drunk or like <laughs> making sure that everybody who is drunk and has fallen is taken care of. So, like, they're like the, the organizing team basically, the second year is that's their yakori. And then the third year and the fourth year, they just drink, they just have fun and, and try to get everybody to drink. And like, bao mori a g e r u time. So, so that was, so I, I realized that I learned that from the sakura.、Mm-hmm. And that to me already is kind of like, 
interesting, kind of weird because, because like drinking for fun didn't sound so organized in my head, you know. Yeah. I was like, okay, you're gonna be like the organizing person. You're gonna prepare all yeah. the buckets for people to puke on, and like, you know, it should be just everybody have fun and like drink alcohol. Like, if you want to get drunk, get drunk. But it wasn't the case. And like in the sakura drinking culture, it was like that. And then there would be a lot of um like calls, like koru, like like little chants or like little songs that people would, would make that would make people drink. Like if you like, like if you just had it, then no, 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 icky, 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 icky. I don't know if you know that. No, that it just means like just mm. down it, down it. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that was very shocking, and then yeah, it was kind of brutal for me, for someone who who never really like、um, had any experience with alcohol in high school, other than like prom. <laughs> Or like post graduate, <laughs> post graduation clubbing.、Um, <laughs> other than that, and then going into that whole like ik 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 ik, I was like, oh, what the fuck, <laughs> what am I doing my life, <laughs> you know? And then, and then, but I still kind of like, okay, I still stood my ground, and until my second year,、um, I became kambu, and then that was the point where I was like, okay, this is enough for me because. Um, we had these like little trips、um, to go near、uh, near the、uh, Kawaguchiko, so like near the Fujisan, and it's just like a little gashiku, and we'd had that like several times a year. And for kambu, basically that means、um, we have to make sure that、um, during this small trip, like every night is a very、um, Like a big drink night, every night is the drink night, and every night we're we're the team who's gonna make sure everybody gets drunk and everybody has fun and and、um, has enough alcohol and、um, have enough snacks, things like that. And that part is okay, but I helped out with preparing the scene for the the drinking party, and、um, I had to. I learned that I had to、um, blue sheets or hiku, like put down blue sheet. This like a blue sheet is like a like a plastic sheet, basically that people put on sometimes for a picnic、um, in the yoyogi koen, for example, to hanami. You know, you have that like plastic sheet on the ground, and so we had to like cover the entire room with the blue sheet. Why? Because people were puking everywhere. So, gotta protect the the room, and and had to like prepare buckets on the side to make sure like when I see somebody's gonna puke, I wanna like take them and like go to the bucket. That was that was my role, and and at that point I was like, okay, I think I'm done with this life. <laughs> like I can't be doing more meaningful things. Like anything would be more meaningful than this. Like staring into the wall or like staring outside, looking at the. Mountains is better than ten times better than doing this. So then I decided to end my career in that sakura. <laughs> yeah, it was really intense. It was so intense. I think usually I'm not quite sure. Can't don't quote me on this, but I think it's the sports sakura that are usually really intense with drinking. And same with like taiku guy. I don't know if you guys know about Taikai culture. It's also really interesting. You wanna explain a little bit more about it? Okay. Well, I didn't personally experience it because I didn't、uh-huh. join Taikai, but it's kind of like、uh-huh. this, the university sports team. So, like the school、uh, school team, basically. And if you're in Taikai, then you have this certain like very certain lifestyle.、Um, so basically, you every every day after. After school, you have to go then shoot, and then you have to always wear like the uniform to school, even at college. And then、um, within Taiku Kai, there's really heavy、um, nenko joritsu, like、uh, ten times more intense than a sakura. Basically, you have to bow at the senpai, or like you know, like if the senpai tells you to do ikki, 
even if you're already drunk, like, you have to do it, you know? Like, konjo <laughs> miseru, and, and like all kinds of things like that to test your limits. Um, and then eventually after college, usually, like, what they say is that um, if you were in a taiku guy, you, you, um, it's easier for you to get a job because a lot of big companies like, uh, ha- like, or hire, um, specifically taiku guy people. Cause that kind of proves that they're used to the system or like they're, they're, um, they're willing to follow a certain, uh, tradition, like Japanese working tradition. And they're willing to work hard. Like it's just like a symbol of a hardworking person is basically to join a tech guy. Which also didn't make sense for me at that time, but eventually it kind of does make sense. Yeah. I don't know if that was a good explanation. I think I remember I I think I remember learning a, a word that means that that uh because I remember I was watching Terrace House and they were describing this one athlete and they were saying like, oh, he's like, he's like a, this sort of character. So he's like really respects all the, the levels of, of like dynamic between people. But I don't remember what the word was. Mm. You become that kind of person. It's like attached to your character. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you have that char- character or you, if you are, if you are, um, it's almost like a skill set, I think, in Japan. Like if you're able to do that really well, um, then basically you 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 do really well at work. You're able to understand the entire like dyna- dynamic with the with the ninko joritsu, or or you're able to perform um like know your place basically Mm -hmm. and do what you're supposed to do in your place then people elders or the higher ups would like that like in the traditional japanese culture i think yeah yeah and and kind of going off of that because um i know you've had some experience with uh internships in japan and arubaito so can you share oh yeah yeah yeah. like okay um (laughs) so my first my first arubaito was at Mr. Donuts because I just wanted to get a get an arubaito at a food place so I could get food because mm-hmm. it's <laughs> expensive. <laughs> I did. I guess I got super fat because I just ate donuts all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's where I learned how strict um people were with time and it was so it was just that like being strict with time or being late is the worst crime you can do and i learned it i feel like i learned it the hard way where i overslept at one of like for okay the first day of work i I arrived like one minute late. I, cause I, to me, I, I was not late. Like one minute late. It's not late. It's just, I arrived on time. And cause usually you're like in other cultures, there's like leeways, right? Like, yeah, it can be okay, like 15 like, minutes late. Right. Like, okay. 15 minutes, maybe a little bit long, <laughs> but, but like five minutes, like you're early five minutes or late five minutes, like great. But, um, in Japan, it's like it, once that, once that passes, the 12 mark one second you're done like, <laughs> you're, like you're fired like you're, you're dead to me kind of like perfect, you know i didn't know that so i arrived one minute late and my tencho was already like super kind of like like stouty like you know like <laughs> the, the hell this kid like so disrespectful <laughs> and i and I was like, wow, that's uh, all on time. And like, usually you have to get on time. You have to arrive, um, before, you have to arrive before, uh, before 15 minutes. So before the 15 minutes. So like, if you start at eight, you have to arrive before 7.45. So not even at 7.45. Like, you have to oh, arrive before, before 7.45 <laughs> to prepare for something that you don't know might happen before work that, you might need to prepare 
And then, no, 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 no. You have to arrive to change, to get ready, like appearance wise. And then the last 15 minutes, you have to prepare for some things that you might need to prepare. Like, um, one of the things that I did at Mrs. Ons was we would always have to read this poster together with somebody who's also starting to work. We'd re- read together, like, like these things, like calls, like we would have to like read it and practice it three times before we go on. And that we would have to do that the, during that 15 minutes. Every day? And then once, yeah, every day. Oh, wow. <laughs> and we also had to get the, get the manager or the, yeah, the, the potential person to check if we said it well. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, <laughs> and then get get him to check like our um, our appearance, like whether okay the apron is like well tied or not. Like oh, your socks is showing and yours like it's pink, so that's not okay. Go go get a black socks, like things like that, or like your hair is not tied or like your hair is falling out. Well, I guess that's more important because it's like um, sick it's gone. But anyway. So uh, we have to get checked 15 minutes. And then at eight, you start, you go on the floor. So, mm-hmm. you, you, so I can't arrive at eight. That's what I meant. So I learned that the first day and the second day I overset three hours. <laughs> so was it like after they, after he scolded you? Yeah, after he scolded me, he was <laughs> like, okay, so next time you come back, you come at 745. Like you don't come at eight. And then I was like, Hi, hi, hi. Okay, shot. Like the next day I woke up and I was supposed to go in at like eight or something and then and then I w- it was I woke up at like eleven. I was like I'm <laughs> done. I'm so done. I'm so dead. I, that I think that day was the scariest day of my life. Like I've been to haunted houses and like different <laughs> watched all kinds of horror movies was never as scary as that feeling of waking up at 11 and being like holy shit <laughs> and then I just, just got everything I ran and then I ran in and I did the whole like and then like they were like and that Tincho was like he was about to fire me I'm sure he was like trying to like rip me into pieces he, he was like, like, I don't know, like, yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, oh, <shit>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. And then, and then, he was like, and then, like, I just, I just finished that day. And then after that, I just, I, I would not, I would not miss that. I would be right on time, always. Oh, so he, be you, always you weren't fired? I, I was fired. I wasn't fired. I was fired. No, okay. I still did my, like, one, I think one and a half years or two years of Vaito at Mr. Donuts. Yeah. Nice. But he kept the faith in the foreigners. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 like, pro- I, like, I proved them wrong that, <laughs> like, they, they, they probably didn't regret. Because my that area, sometimes there's, Chinese people who comes in and even though they don't speak Chinese to me because I don't look well if I'm like serving them like they wouldn't expect like this the waitress to be Chinese to be to know how to speak Chinese so so but sometimes like I would be like oh because I would miss speaking in Chinese I'll try to like interact with them mm-hmm. and then all of my co- colleagues would be like I miss I'm like oh Oh my god! Like you say Chinese, like oh my god, she's Warner, and then and then also like I think for them it was very um like new to not say the things that are not from the poster, right? Because when you work, it's like you just say those things, like you just say, do you want to put it in a bag? Okay, do you point to call the maska? Like, do you want to use your points and like that? You just like say all these things, or like, oh, oh, like, 
抹茶ドーナツいかがですか Like, you know, you always say, like, the 決まってるかけ言葉 And it was, it was super rare for somebody to interact with customers normally, like a human being. <laughs> Usually just a robot. Yeah. <laughs> so when I was like speaking Chinese to Chinese people, or、um, sometimes my, my friends from school would come in and we would speak in English. They'd be like, hey, what's up? And like, they'll be like, oh my God. Why are, you, why are you being so n a r i n a r i s h i with the o k a k s a m a And yeah, I think that, that was, they probably thought that was the culture shock for them. But for me, I was like super bored. So I wanted to like talk to the people there. Yeah. Next time、so, you talk to them, they told you how good your Japanese was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they'll be like, oh, Tashkani, o n o t e r a s a n t e Tashka, Taiwan, Taiwan, this. でしたよね。<笑> And I was like, そうそうそうそうそう。<笑>台湾から来ました。いや、いや、ああ、そうなんです。台、台湾語？ん？中、中国語？<笑>中国語。中国語。Yeah, literally, I see that so many times. <笑> yeah, 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 yeah. <笑> Which I, I guess it makes sense. Like it, it's understandable. Uh-huh. Cause yeah, yeah. They probably don't. Understand, they don't really know much about、yeah. Taiwan, they don't know what language they speak. Yeah, what's funny is like, yeah, so that the was, questions that one Japanese person has, other Japanese people always have like the same question, too. Yeah, like because there's yeah, like yeah, yeah, all yeah. this like assumed knowledge that everyone just has. Mm, mm. Also, you have to be surprised at the same points, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, all the guys have to react, like. <laughs> At the, at the exact same things.、Yeah. Or, same pitch. No, like, yeah, 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 yeah. So you kind of just have to like master that tone or like that pitch and you can just talk to anybody. That's what I learned. Make like a choir of that where everyone's like, hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or maybe you just need like buttons on you on like an electronic device. And whenever somebody says something, I just. Yeah. Like an inorganic、yeah. reaction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that would work. That would work. Yeah. But, um, but I really, well, it's、so、like in the beginning year, the, like the first and second year of living in Japan, the culture shock was so. Because it's so unfamiliar and I'm unfamiliar to those things. And、um, it was really out of my comfort zone. And, I, and a lot of things just didn't make sense to me. So it was really hard. And it was easy for me to like criticize or say, oh, yeah, they were like weird, you know. But after a while, like I really started to appreciate、um, their politeness, for example. Like even if their responses are always like mechanic or Like it's always almost the same. At least they respond, or、mm. um, at least they are very polite about it, or they're listening to what you're saying. And、um, that's what I really appreciate. Like they don't talk overtly about themselves, for example. Like in a conversation, they don't just go off on their life line.、Uh, and I really respect that. Like people have that. Mutual respect of each other's time and like each other's speaking spaces and, and,、um, like boundaries. And it's just always full of respect and politeness. I think that's really important.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. How would you compare? So that's, that's,、mm. How would you compare like, um,、uh, like customer service in Taiwan versus customer service in Japan? Cause in Taiwan, there are places、oh. where it's kind of formal. Like if you go to a mall and you go to like the reception, they're like, they kind of bow to you. Um, they might speak、yeah. like, more formally. But、um, if、yeah. you go to like a restaurant or a store, you could easily just have like a normal conversation with people too. How would you compare that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, just like you said,、um, in, terms of, in terms of the service quality, definitely Japan has the best service quality because to them, like, customer is God, right? Like,、mm-hmm. okakusama. So, even if, even if it's a, in a, Donut shop, or like when you imagine that, you think like, oh, hospitality, like in, hos-、uh, in hotels where you're, you get treated like you're a god, like 
but no, like you actually get treated like a god everywhere you go in Japan. So even in small donut shops or like, or like in the even like in shiakusho, like it's not even a shop. Mm-hmm. Like you get treated really respectfully and really like like with the e title, mm-hmm. like a good yeah. And then, um, but um, and in con in contrary in Taiwan. Everywhere is just kind of sloppy, like, like take don't like sway yeah. bian, like take don't. It's like it's almost like, too casual. Oh, whatever, like, oh, just yeah, super casual. Like you can do it. Like you can do it yourself. Like yeah. just the tissues right there. Just go get it yourself. Like yeah. you know, like, like <laughs> that's like the um the the service quality that you get from mm-hmm. Taiwan. But in return, you get the warmth of people wanting to um. Interact with you yeah. more authentically, so you get to ban- have like banter's with the the clerk or or say like oh, 最近是剪头发 <laughs> like oh you're like cut your hair and like looks great on you and then you'd be like oh thank you you know yeah. like that kind of things like you can do it you can I feel comfortable doing it with Tommy Seal but that does not happen in Japan right. you would not say. <laughs> You look great in your your, <laughs> your new haircut to like a server in Japan. Yeah. That that would be creepy and that would be inappropriate because you know you're the god now right. and the gods you don't, don't talk to <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's just like <laughs> in Japan, it's just full of. I'd say it's just full of respect, and that's right. it. So respect to the point where、um, there's always a distance between people. Right. Are like unfamiliar people, in a good and a bad way. Yeah. Do you think it's possible to br- then, break that、mm. barrier? Because I don't know if you listened to a Jack episode, but he was hoping to be able to make friends with like people in the kombini, like when he goes to Japan. <laughs> 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 That's a specific goal that he、oh, had. I... Yeah, it was like a very specific <laughs> dream that he wanted to accomplish. He was very. I think it's possible. It. Really? Yeah, I think it's possible. Um, if you always go to the same community at the same time, and you, you, yeah, I think it's possible. Yeah, it's definitely possible. It just takes time. In the beginning, it also it also depends on that the people at the community, if whether they want to be friends with you,、True. whether they're, <laughs> because I think a lot of people in Japan they have this really、um, stern like attitude on like shigoto wa shigoto. Mm-hmm. Private, private. <laughs> like we're like, when you're at work, you're at work. Like you don't, you don't, you don't try to make friends. Like you don't, you don't flirt with girls. Like you know, like、yeah. you're at work. So if if the company clerk has that kind of professionalism, like、mm-hmm. maybe it might be hard. But if if that person is pretty chill, like just like doing company, like BB, like just doing by though, then possible. I mean, depends on people, yeah. And, and also, like I think,、um, it's hard, it's really easy to like generalize Japanese people, but there's actually there's a lot of like exceptions, and、yeah. a lot of people are super cool and like super chill as well. So yeah, it just depends.、Sure. But like when we talk about it, it's obviously it's like the overall like atmosphere or like that we notice. Yeah, yeah. like there's、atmosphere. definitely a majority type of Japanese person. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, that's actually something we talked about prior to where you have like this whole mentality where if you go outside of the norm, like like in the U.S., for example, if you're doing something different than everyone else, then you're seen as kind of oh wow, that's so cool that you're pursuing that. Whereas in Japan, it's like oh, you're pursuing that. Why don't you just get like a salaryman job? So yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Has that attitude ever kind of like bothered you when you've kind of interacted with it? Yeah, definitely. I think it's still. It really also influenced me because、um, when it comes to like shukatsu and finding work after college.、Uh, oh, I haven't graduated, by the way. I'm still in college <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> because I went to France. And the reason why I went to France during my college days is just that is because I didn't want to lose my shinsotsu waku, my status as a shinsotsu, like a newly graduate. And 
that just proves that I was influenced that influenced by that um, whole like structure, societal structure of of um, graduating and immediately entering a entering company and uh, and start working. Versus like I when I was in Europe, like it was so common for everybody to be to stop whenever they want with education and do whatever they want, like in between or like go travel the world at 23 and then come back and maybe they'll, they'll start getting a job or it doesn't, it, the timeline doesn't matter at all. But in Japan, it's so strict that, that um, like they have set dates on when to start looking for jobs and when to stop looking for jobs and when to start your job and your career and things like that. And um, that's very, I'd say it's something that I had to, um, like, uh, um, I have no way other than follow it or respect it. Because that's the, that's, if I want to work in Japan and that's how, that's the rule, then I have to respect that. You know, I have to live in that. Even if it doesn't make sense to me. Just like, just like with Kegel and everything else. Like, mm -hmm. It, there's always like just trying to get um, used to it or just accepting um, different um, ways of living in Japan, like assimilating. Yeah. So I'd say in the beginning, it was ton very daunting for me to think that, okay, oh, I'm going to do go through that shukatsu um, thing. But now I think I'm, in a more mature state, I say, okay, I'll just do it. So, so your current plan is to, um, after you graduate, just work in a, a Japanese company? Yeah. Well, not necessarily a Japanese company, but in Japan. Yeah. I see. So you'd be open, would you be open to like working in like English, for example, for like an American company? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it would be ideal for me to work in a, American or foreign or European company in Japan. Yeah, that would be ideal. Like I, I honestly, I don't have the confidence to say that I will do really well in a Japanese Japanese company because of all, all of all the above, like co conflicting ideas, like things. Yeah, that I can't accept myself. For example, um, well, right now I have normal hair, but like I, at one point I used to have all kinds of different colored hair and that was something that I didn't want to let go of, you know, mm. like that was like my, <laughs> my identity and thinking about shukatsu and people who, you know, right at the point where they turn, um, yonense no haru, they like, all the cool people just turns uncool all of a sudden, they just come back to all black with the, the, <laughs> literally this haircut <laughs> and like they stop wearing like cool clothes and like they have a suit and you know like they're always like black suit skirt this length heels and like a like a shoulder back with with their notebook of like all of their menses dates and like you know like everybody just turns becomes like that and i was like oh i would not want to be like that you mm -hmm. know but so, now... Could they got to you? <laughs> <laughs> no, don't say it like that. But... <laughs> yeah, well, I get. I was just like, okay, I guess I have to do it. Like, I, I understand it now better. Like, I'm more mature about it. Like, cool colored hair is not my priority in my life right now. So, right. back then it was. It was like, my identity. Like... <laughs> art is life you know <laughs> but yeah now it's it's not so getting a job is more important yeah <laughs> but would you say your experience in japan was like when you did have the colored hair because it's definitely like out of the norm for like a normal japanese like citizen so i guess like how did that feel and like did people look at you like super different differently um actually no uh i'd say as a student and especially in my campus, it was normal, super normal. Nobody looks at you weirdly. And especially if I lived um, first and the second year of college, I lived around my campus. 
which is in the middle of nowhere. And I don't really go in, I don't even go into Tokyo that much. So didn't really, I didn't really experience any um, discrimination, but yeah, <laughs> uh, I didn't experience any of that. Everybody was cool. Um, and even after that, I moved to closer to Tokyo and I'd go in for another job um, that which is which was in Shinjuku and that during that time mm, I'd say people were also pretty accepting of weird looking people I I think it's because it's a big city and Shinjuku you know the whole like Yamano Tesen has Shibuya has Harajuku so naturally there are a lot of people that are um all kinds of cool like fashion fashionistas mm -hmm. who take that so nobody nobody gave looks i think but if you were in uh shinagawa or in like marunouchi or in like shinbashi i think you'd get more weird looks because everybody that would be the salary women area yeah and depends yes. on the, the places mm. did you ever feel any like additional pressures being like a girl and maybe like having to conform in certain ways or maybe um like having a certain career path because i know for example a lot of uh, girls who graduate from college they if they work in a company they might just be like an ol position or they might like just yeah. try to get married and so they don't so they just yeah. immediately become a housewife do you ever feel any sort of like uh, pressures um i think uh right now is the time where um well okay i haven't started working in japan so i i can't say for sure but the the feeling that i'm getting from around and from the news and from um people who are, has already started working is that um actually the the current trend is to break away from that so that's is that's considered that type of um life path for a woman is is considered super old and mm -hmm. traditional and conservative and the new the new way of living is just w like working woman and strong independent woman so i think no i don't feel that pressure of needing to I don't even consider that as my possible life choice, like becoming a housewife. Go to Goku and like, yeah, 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 mm -hmm. no, <laughs> yeah. And I think that that is the case for a lot of uh, women at my age, yeah, which is cool, yeah. Oh, although um, that could be deceiving because um, I think they're 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 really good at saying like oh we're gonna do new campaigns to stop um, um, this kind of like discrimination against women in in the working space for example or like we're gonna we're gonna try to stop people from overworking but in reality like every single person that I know um, might like every every week they dangle for at least forty hours. And then that's just, that's not going to change. Wait, on top of the 40 so, hours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So 80 total hours. 40 hours. So t 80 <laughs> hours for me? Yeah. <laughs> oh my and I, God. I, I, uh, I have a screenshot of my friend's um, work schedule or like the, their like work um, record, table. working oh. record, timetable. Oh. She, she works like, she worked like at least a um, hundred hours over time every week what? 100 hours yeah. over time on top of 40 Wait. hours yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah 140 yeah. hours oh yeah, yeah she, oh, she works in a God. she works in a television like uh whole, studio that's more than like a startup ceo oh. yeah, yeah exactly uh, so i had to screenshot that i was like oh, wait, let me just screenshot that real quick <laughs> <laughs> just just like for me to show my friends <laughs> Can you, yeah. can you ever like envision yourself working all that extra overtime in like a Japanese Japanese company? Oh yeah, that I that totally envision that. 
because I think I'm pretty mm, um, weak at um, peer pressure. And I think that's one of the big factors of how people get into working over time is they're not they're not allowed to leave before their joshi or their senpai or their superiors and um in a in a like a um politeness scale mm-hmm. kind of thing like you're not supposed to leave before you're not supposed to go home and relax before your superiors because they're still working so that means you still have work you know uh-huh. uh so i think that's a big factor because a lot of times like i know um all, some of my friends are like yeah i don't have anything to, to work but i just can't leave hmm. yeah so since i'm pretty weak at peer pressure i think yeah. i'd be really into that into that whole like if if i start working yeah the japanese company which is dangerous how do you think japanese people feel about the zango that they're doing because is it is it more like i hate my job i i wish i wasn't doing this or is it like oh i'm i'm like happy i'm like putting in all these hours and doing productive work i don't think they think it's i don't think they think that it's productive work like it's definitely not productive and it's not efficient but they uh i think they they have they have that like professionalism of like knowing that they have to do certain things really well like like I'd say, like sloppiness is the is one thing that Japanese people don't know how to be. So um, they overwork, but oh, not happily overworking. But they would overwork because in their mind, like it's it's understandable. It's um, it makes sense to over- overwork. Like there are things that they need to do in their mind that they have to stay. Yeah. Um, so I don't think they're, they're, well, I can't, okay, again, like I can't speak for them because I haven't started working, but mm-hmm. it seems like um, it's not much of a choice, but at the same time, it's not like excruciatingly painful. Like, why am I doing my life? Like, yeah. it's like they know that they have to overtime, overwork. Um, out of politeness or out of like the quality of their work and then like they just want to believe that that would um, like something good will come in return in the future like they would get promoted or or people will recognize their hard workingness you know mm. I think it's like a it's like a meaningful thing to do to the, for them yeah that's why it's considered normal and it's considered necessary it's considered um okay and also you also get to get you used to get paid more uh, uh for overwork so to them it's like if i can work like i'm willing to dedicate my time to work then then i'm gonna work and get all these money so to them i think it's like mm-hmm. it makes sense yeah yeah and then when you in the cases where you hear like people jumping off a building and like dying from <laughs> overworking yeah. i think that is like the extreme where um the really like under super hard um pressure from superiors or their peers is more of the, the like the humanitarian aspect of the work space like the work culture of mm-hmm. that company is toxic or scary or people are just too competitive or something like that that causes overworking deaths like karoshi but the overworking itself i think comes from like the the japanese spirit of wanting to do something really well and like work really hard yeah. so, 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 so. so did you have any situations of like uh kuki omenai when you like maybe first went to Japan or even like maybe recently? Mm, um, well, yeah, because at one point I just decided to not care anymore. Mm-hmm. So I just became like the Kukyo and I person all the time. Like I just leave when I feel like <laughs> it's pretty much it. <laughs> like group drinking parties, for example, 
because people are so polite and they 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 don't want to leave before everyone else leaves, even though they want to leave, you know. So yeah, cook your menai is when I just leave, and you'd be like, also in the day, kairi mas, janet, and then they'll be like, oh, 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 kairi, kairi, kairi. Oh, oh, like going back to that sakura and toki. Um, yeah. in the sakura, <laughs> I, I refuse to drink. Um, when I, when I refuse to ikki, or when I wanted to go sleep, and when I was like a kambu, but I didn't take care of anybody, that was super cool. Your and I, that was like, mm-hmm. that was like unacceptable for the senpais. Yeah, I think a lot of like drinking culture things has to do with kuki. Oh. Yeah, and you have to know. You have to know, like, um, if the the bottle, for example, that you're drinking from is is coming to an end, or you see that people have their glasses open, then usually it's like the girl's job to, a, like, a really good person girl's job to refill it or ask, like, oh, tsuki nani no, or like, and then like order it for them, like kiyokubaru koto. Is like super important, mm. and yeah, I think that's something that I learned just recently how to do. I tried really hard. Otherwise, I didn't do. And also because of that, I was probably up probably not very popular with guys because like, ah, こいつ空気読めないとかこいつ気配りできないとか like she can't do all these like attentive things and. That's like a big、um, minus. I see. So I guess now it's been almost four years fully in college as a student, right? So throughout that time, what would you say your highest high was, and what was your lowest low? Um, my lowest low was definitely in the、uh, first and second year, where. I wasn't sure of my own identity as half Japanese and half Taiwanese, and trying to assimilate myself to all these,、um, all the Japanese drinking culture or、um, university culture that,、uh, like, kind of like conflicted with what I was used to,、um, and I felt really lonely at that time because I wasn't able to make friends, like Japanese friends, through my circle. And、um, it was really just a lonely time, so that was the lowest low.、Um, but with time, it got eventually got better.、Um, and one thing that really helped me was、um, working, like doing doing arubaito and doing part time jobs,、um, because then you get to talk to a lot more different types of people that are not just university students, and you kind of like establish your. Your position as a foreigner or not, like in that in the Japanese、um, social space, and that really helped me to accept that yeah, I'm not fully Japanese, but I could still be Japanese, and I can still talk about Taiwan, I can still talk about everything that I want with Japanese people.、Um, I just have to stand my ground, and with that mindset, like everything just got a lot better, and I got I made a lot of friends afterwards with my part time job,、um, and actually. It, Um, being half Taiwanese became like a strong, like an asset, or like something that makes me unique. Like in the end, and that attracted a lot of people, a lot of cool people.、Um, yeah, so that was at towards the end, it just got better and better. And yeah, I'd say like before I left for France last year, it was my, my highest high, where just like I have a lot of friends and、um, never felt lonely, just hanging out and talking about all kinds of things. Yeah. Is there any advice you would give to any、um, foreigners who are thinking about studying for university in Japan?、Um, if you're in Tokyo or in the 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 area like Kanagawa, Saitama, Chiba, then I'd say it's super big. Just look at the map, and you would find any type of people. Like you could find potentially find any type of people who. You can click with. So, if you're feeling really lonely in one setting, like for example, for me, it was in the sports circle setting. Just leave that setting and go find your own, your next group. Whether that be like expats or、um, like 
a, another group with the same hobby or go try to go get a part-time job to meet different people. And then from that, like, I think it'll be a lot more fun. You just need to find the right people. And it's possible to find the right people because it's so big. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's a great place to wrap up the podcast. Um, yeah, in this episode, we kind of walked through Emily's whole start in Taiwan, how she kind of went from um, a Taiwanese school to a bilingual school to an international school, and then finally traveling over to Japan for a four-year university and really going through the growths and struggles that she did over there. And hope that it'll help out you guys as listeners a lot moving forward if that is something you guys want to go for. And with that being said, I really want to go thank Emily for joining us on this podcast. It was really great to have her on and it was a great treat um, to have you here. Um, is there anything you would like to plug or have um, shown to everyone? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. It's Ono Poop. At Ono Poop. <laughs> 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 really great Instagram tag, everyone. Make sure to follow Ono Poop. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys for having me. Hope it was of some value. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really great to like hear your entire backstory. It was like good to catch up to you because like we haven't really talked in like a while now. And yeah, I didn't really ever hear about yeah, like your yeah, yeah. entire backstory before high school too right 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 yeah. right 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 yeah 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 it's nice super nice catching up with eric yeah and now i guess before we sign off do you have a, a special message to tell the korekara listeners korekara listeners you're at the right place <laughs> 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 well yeah I'd, um i'd say if you're korekara listeners that means you're korekara going might be going to japan or getting into the japanese culture um it might sound uh da daunting but it's japanese people are super cool the culture is beautiful and yeah i think you'll have a great time there <laughs> yeah just like i did Thanks for listening to the Kodakara Podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode as much as we did. Make sure to subscribe to us on our YouTube channel because episodes will be uploaded there earlier and each episode will have English subtitles as well as a glossary for any Japanese words used. So go check out our Ko-fi page if you want to donate a cup of coffee to us. Also, you can join our Discord, which is basically just like a Facebook group where you can talk to us and make posts. Thanks for listening. <laughs>